second audio test. Okay, uh, we're good to go. Hello everyone, this is Gun the Mace, aka John Hooper, and I'm here with my streaming of Secret Game Killer Queen. Last time we left off, well, we got a lot of revelations. Um, first of all, more of the armored me armed men tried to attack Soichi's group, but Fumika, using a bunch of devices and her own combat skills, managed to injure a lot of them and brought Soichi, Sakumi, and Yuki to a safe room where she explained that she is actually a sort of terrorist, part of a anti-terrorist group called ACE that is aiming to take down the game along with the organization associated with it. And she was sent here originally in order to plant devices in preparation for an upcoming attack. But the attackers had been split up, split up because um, some people in ACE maliciously puts Yuki in the game, who turned out to be the daughter of the boss of the organization. And so the boss is hanging out there now, giving ACE a, a chance to um, take him down once and for all. And so she, she's got Soichi's Sakumi and Yuki's help, although Yuki does not know of her own importance to this, she doesn't know of her own role. And yeah, when we last left off, Tezuka, and Taki, Tezuka was figuring out how, um, was getting a good idea of what, what was really going on behind the scenes. Oh yeah, and Fumika also told them about how the game is a show. So we last left off, they were trying to regroup with their, the rest of their team, so we'll see if it goes well. And here we go. Fumika's track, thanks to Fumika's um, excellent tracker, um, um, thanks to Fumika's excellent tracker, Soichi and his group managed to make it over to Hazuki and the others at 4 p.m. when the fourth floor became a forbidden area. It had been 54 hours since the start of the game. There are only 18 more hours left until the collar is activated. Soichi! Sakumi sama! Karin greeted the group, shouting loudly. Uji datanda! You're safe! Ah, Yuki chan mo Fumika san mo issho da ne! And Yuki and Fumika are with you too! Nagisa followed up with that. Karin was receiving treatment from Nice in the middle of the room. It seemed Karin's left arm was injured, as Nice was wrapping a bloodstained bandage around it. A faintly bloodstained bandage around it. It seemed Nice herself didn't have any wounds, and she was treating Soichi and the others the same as she had before. Karin! Nagisa! <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Yuki ran over to the two of them. The two of them took her hands and left for joy as they smiled. <laughs> Ow! And that, when she when they didn't, um, Karin grimaced when she hurt her left her injured her left arm. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Karin. I was just so happy that I didn't think about what I was doing. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Karin quickly forced a smile at Yuki. Naisa, how are Hazuki and Reika? When Fumika asked this, Naisa's face grew dark. 
about that. Nice to tearfully point to a corner of the room. Hazuki and Reika were lying there. The two of them were apparently unconscious. They didn't react to any of the up to any of the ruckus. It was clear from the bandages on their arm, head, and abdomens that um, their wounds were not so light. Oh, thank goodness. Mitsugi, they're both alive. Sakumi quickly ran over to the two of them and heaved a huge sigh when she confirmed their, their when she checked their heartbeats. She was worried they might have been dead. Sakumi feels that way, and I guess we don't have to worry too much. Sakumi's face was cheerful. When he saw that, Soichi re realized that Hazuki and Reiko's um, condition wasn't as serious as they seemed. Sakumi wouldn't be smiling if it was. Soichi was beginning to understand Sakumi's that level they could tell that much from her, but he wasn't aware of it at this time. What happened, Nagisa? Well, you see, when we waited at the place we were supposed to uh, meet up with you guys, those armed men came. Nice to start explaining with a depressed look. It, sh it, it showed the show. It shows an example of how grim the current situation was. How many were there? Um, I think it was about eight or nine people. We got out of there quickly, so I'm not really sure though. Nice to bow their head apologetically. Closed her and spoke. So then what happened? When Fumika pressed her onwards, um, nice to be in talking again. Um, those guys came in from the front, from the front. So we escaped through the back exit. I made it out okay, but the others were shot then. Sakumi, uh, sorry. Now you say indicate Karin and the two, their two resting comrades. So we escaped with our lives and made it out this far. They didn't come after you? Mm. Look, seemed like they were chasing us on the fifth floor. But once we got to the sixth floor, it seemed like they stopped. I see. So they're going about the same way as me, huh? Fumika understood when she heard Nagisa's story. It was just for the same reason why she hadn't tried to wipe out all the all the men. By forcing because by forcing them to help the wounded, 
it decreased their mobility. That way, even if Soichinia was mad with them, they'd slow them down. If they screwed up and killed them, then many cameras would be on... ...on Soichi's group, so this was the most effective method. But the god is good, huh? Now we have now we can't run. We have to think of a way to protect ourselves. Fumiko was worried about the two who'd attack them on the fourth floor of in the, the fourth floor non combat area of the robot. She figured they'd definitely come to attack again. Anyway, I'm glad I'm glad I got I'm glad we got to see each other again. Karin held her wound with a smile. She she was genuinely happy to have reunited with Soichi and the others. Second, I found it, Karin. This is a separation. This is a painkiller. Um, take them and sleep for a while, Karin. <laughs> this is nothing. I can manage. Karin shook her head at the medicine Nice offered. Nice is right, Karin. We're here now, so please just rest for a while. Demo. But. Hold on a second. We'll put you to work when you wake up. So don't worry about it, Karin. Karn still was reluctant, but she nodded to Soichi's words. Got it, I'll do that. Soichi, there's a large rifle over there, so if you get in the fight, use it. Yeah. Well, you handle the rest, Soichi. The rest of you, too. No! Yep. Yuki nodded. Once Karin saw that, she took the medicine Nice was holding out. Soichi washed as she opened her mouth and put and drank the water at the same time. So what's our next move, Fumika? For now, let's protect ourselves in this place. Um, let's pile up furniture and make it so they can't attack us directly from the entrance. Got it. Sakumi, will you help me out? Yes, Yes, understood. Sakumi nods and stood up. She followed Soichi over towards a large, um, shelf, shelves by the wall. I'll help too. Yuki also tried over. 
And so the three of them started moving it together. I used to watch the three of them as she sat by Karin's pillow. What's wrong? Fumika called out to Narisa when she noticed her changing attitude. I was thinking about how those three have always been like that. Narisa gave a gentle smile and looked back over to Soichi, Sakumi, and Yuki. For some reason, Fumika thought that her gaze and s thought that her smile looked a bit sad. Are you jealous? A little, because I wasn't capable of that. There was regret oozing in those words. Her voice was filled with sorrow. I might have some kind of painful past, huh? That was how Fumika interpreted Nice's attitude. So she, mu so Fumika mustered the most cheerful expression she could, and reached her hand out to Nagisa. Then why don't we join them and help out? Huh? Naisa stared at Fumika's hand with, with puzzlement. She didn't glance over back at Soichi and the others, then up at um, Fumika's face. Yeah. Well? After Fumika said that, um, Naisa finally nodded. <laughs> Alright. I decided to go with that. Nice and gave a big smile, took Fumika's hand, stood up. Okay. Check the bets. Around the time Soichi's group was playing up the barricades, um, the, ca the pandemonium in the control room of the casino was reaching its peak. What do we do? They've regrouped. Calm down, please calm down, Mr. Kaneda. There's no longer anywhere to run. The dealer for this game have been trying to calm down the agitated Kaneda for a while now. But his efforts were proving fruitless, as Kaneda just kept heating up, just kept heating up more and more. How the hell can I stay calm? If we don't get, if we don't get Miss Yuki back soon, we'll be in big trouble. あの2番と10番の強さは見ただろう。女子供ばかりで立ち打ちできるはずがない。Did you see how strong the 2 and 10 are? Women and children don't stand can't stand couldn't stand a chance against them. But the recovery team has been um, incapacitated, and the assault team won't be there for a little while longer. The 
dealer was also panicking deep down. The team they sent in to recover Yuki had been um, devastated by surprise attacks from someone. Incidentally, um, incidentally, the dealer thought that it was the two and ten, in other words, Taki Allen and Tezuka, were behind the surprise attack. Do the um. One second, sorry. Do the annihilation of the recovery team. Um, Yuki's recovery completely halted. They call in backup, but it would take a while. But it would take it would still take an hour for them to reach the site. Until then, there was absolutely nothing they could do. Game master, game master, That's right. What about the game master? You have the game master there, right? She's there, but she can't recover her but all on her own. Gola was indeed a force to be reckoned with. But that was only as a game master. She didn't have that much battle prowess. Can't we lose, do something to um, keep the 2 and 10 in place? You know how str you've seen their skills for yourself, haven't you? Um, even if she tried to stop them, she'd just get killed. You've got the Submaster too, right? Make the Submaster cooperate. We've been calling her, but we haven't gotten any response at all. Why isn't she answering? I don't know. The dealer finally starts shouting. Just want to show how far, how much as wit's end he was. Their loud shouts caught the attention of all the other staff in the control room. They were anxious. I don't think the, the submaster would betray us at this time. At this point, at, oh, I'm sorry. I don't think the submaster would betray us at this with this timing, but. The panicking dealer, you're, um. Tap the floor over and over again of irritation. People from Ace are acting are moving too. We have to sell things before um young Shiki Joe gets uh, sorry, um... Ace is on the move, too. If we don't sell things before Young Master Shikijo gets there. There may be something... Um... And it's very likely something we can't take back will happen. Young Master Shikijo. There was no one in the organization other than, um... Kinda, who known him the longest, who called him that. Hold on a second. F 
after he learned about um wait one second after he learned about the peril his daughter was in the boss had thrown everything away and headed towards the side of the game Now they've gotten word that Ace was performing some sort of secret maneuvers. Um, kind of couldn't imagine that the boss's arrival at the site would put could lead to a good turn of events. We need to do something before the young master gets there. That was Kinda's greatest priority. Kinda had known the boss since the boss was a child. He had been invited to the boss's wedding and spent the night drinking away with him the day the boss's daughter was born. Kinda wanted to protect him and his, and his daughter Yuki by whatever means necessary. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think the game will be leading us around by the nose. It was an unprecedented occurrence. And slowly but surely, that, um, un the unprecedented occurrence was leading to risk danger. Alright, I'm gonna save and check the bets. Basically, we'll take shelter on behind the barricades and fight back and counterattack. Well, if it doesn't look like it's going to work out, um, we'll take Reika and Mr. Hazuki and go and escape through that exit. Then we could um, gaze at the, bar at the makeshift barricade they constructed out of furniture and start explaining the plan. What if the enemies come from the other direction? Fumika responded with a smile. Or forget any idea of, of fighting back and run away without hesitation. Can we escape? We'll be fine. Isn't that right, Yuki? Yep, I'm good at running. Yuki responded cheerfully, not knowing Fumika's um, intentions. I see. They can't fort. Hold on a second. Can't attack forcefully, and so they so they avoid hurting Yuki, huh? And plus, they need to protect the system that is the game, that is the show. But 
according to Fumika's story, um, their enemies would use false footage to fool the customers of the casino while they attack Soiji's group. They're capable of that, however. However, it was for that reason that the false footage couldn't be that far removed from what really happened. At present, they're only three hours apart from Soichi's group left. So they would basically have to show um, footage of one of those three attacking Soichi's group. It was difficult to pair footage that matched up to, real to this current situation. And if things went badly, um, it would be difficult to make it match up with what happened afterwards. They couldn't afford to keep doing that, and they didn't have the time either. So even though it looks like we're the ones corn on the surface, It's actually the people from the organization who are limited in how they can attack us. They're the ones cornered. Unless they resort to basic measures, they can't even act properly. Those men aside, um, what are we going to do if any of the other participants come by? If they attack us with a robot, um, it'd be better for us to fight back, wouldn't it? <laughs> In my heart, I'd like to do that, but... But be best, I think it'd be best for us to avoid fighting. Those two are tough customers, and they'll attack us, and they'll attack us all out. Attack all out. In other words, they would attack without caring if they hurt y Yuki. Or about the show's system or anything like that. Since they were functioning within the... Um, since the game's participants were acting within the boundaries of the game's rules, um, they wouldn't have the same restrictions as the armed group. Which means those two are the ones we should be the most careful of in this situation, huh? According to what they heard from Fumika and Nagisa, the ones who attacked them on the fourth floor were two men. Soichi had met Tezuka on the first day. Consider the number of people remaining. Fear one of them should be Tez should be Tezuka. And there's one other man I haven't met. Which meant that the final survivor was the woman who'd been with Tezuka on the first day. When Soichi had met Tezuka, he had a woman named Goda with him. She didn't seem like a bad person. 
so it's possible we could reason with her. I hope there's room for us to negotiate with them. But Sakumi's face clouded over. So what you couldn't, uh, Sakumi couldn't imagine they do after what she'd seen so far. If they had some sort of special color release conditions, then they wouldn't be able to be re um, reasoned with. And perhaps involved the activation of the collars, or perhaps killing someone. It was because they had conditions like those that they used that they used the robots to, they used the robot to attack. That was what Sakumi thought. We we'll won't know until we, we won't know unless we try. Right. Sakumi nodded. But right after that, PDA's alarm came from the PDA's. A dull sound that announced the greatest um, challenge the group had faced yet. The familiar um, pumpkin creature um, danced in from the um, right side of the PDA screen. Once he fell the entire screen, um, a jaunty tune came out of the speakers. The music was like that for a parade at a fantasy theme park. We've got sick taste as always. This was the second time Soichi had seen this pumpkin thing. Last time was when they'd been trapped on the second floor. Soichi looked at the screen with exasperation, and then the pumpkin faced the center of the screen and did a little dance. If we all turn off the power on these things, I better really piss off the guys to set this up. Maybe. Soichi smiled cynically in agreement to Fumika's statement. But in reality, he couldn't take his eyes off the screen. It was the same for everyone else. They all glanced at, grabbed their PDAs and stared at the screen. Soichi, Sakami, Yuki, Fumika, and Nagisa were staring at it. Um. Hazuki and Reiko were unconscious, while Karin had fallen asleep due to the drugs. Hey there, boys and girls. Long time no see. Well, I'm talking to everyone right now, so this may be the first time for some of you here. So allow me to introduce myself once again. My name is Smith. Smith and um waves to the people watching. I've got something pretty interesting to tell you guys. There's no interruptions, you hear? Something interesting? So you focus hard on the screen. Tezuka's word, oh uh, sorry, Smith's um, words appeared on the screen as text. It seemed he hadn't heard them wrong. I don't think it's entirely good for us, but...
I'm gonna get a scolding if I dilly dally too long. So let's just get straight. So let's get down to business, okay? Just then, um, a rectangular plank appeared in front of Tezuka. Oh, uh, sorry, Smith. With the words "extra game" branded on it. Extra game. Now of all times. So you should recall what happened on the second floor. Back then, a limited area had been sealed off and needed to find keys in order to get outside. And once they opened the, the shutters, Yuki had been taken. Now, in, in hindsight, maybe that... Maybe that was all set up as a way of trying to get Yuki back. And now another extra game was on the road to starting. So as you can help but get a bad feeling about that. Time for everyone's favorite extra game! Smith smashed the board and peered again. The extra game we're about to propose is for both our benefits. That's right. You the players, and us. Wouldn't it be great if we could all be happy in the end? You got balls saying that. Soichi immediately wanted to shut Smith up. Smith was the representative of the, of the organization, the ones who'd forced him into this situation. Ah, uh, believe me, we screwed up big time ourselves. We never thought you guys would go this far without fighting, not at all. Thanks to that, our ratings are down the shitter. Ratings? I see, he's talking about the casino. This game was a gambling show for people to bail in a casino. Oh, hold on, let me, sorry, let me check something. Okay, never mind, we're all good. Um, continuing. They're probably starting to complain about how, um... What about seeing Soichi's group, not fighting. Soichi glanced behind him. There were three injured... At the three injured companions sleeping behind him. We actually had several fights up to now, but the customers of the casino don't know that. Looks like it really is just as Fumika said. But still, that doesn't mean we intend to make you guys fight this late. After all, your dear companions who travel the same road and come to understand one another. Mitsurugi, he's acting strange. Sakumi looked up from her PDA. Yeah. Soichi agreed. This throws the whole um, premise of the game 
out the window. Isn't the game about making us fight? As Soichin Sakami st stood there in bewilderment, Smith began um, grumpily explaining something. You're right to be doubtful. Honestly, it makes me sick just saying it myself. All these strangers surviving because of friendship and trust and all that stuff. No, it's all in the nature of the game. Smith and smirked. But that's why you're making this proposal. I mean, aren't, isn't, this, isn't that right? The fact that you're getting along so well means that there are some of you who can't get their collars off. So you should be in just as much of a pickle as we are. Smith leaned further. He was too close to the screen that all they could see was his face. You want to remove your collars. We want to make things more exciting. And so that's, that's why I'd like to introduce this new, this new extra game. Fight to remove the collars. Big bro! Yuki sounds surprised. They're trying to set up a game so you can remove your collar, right? And for Fumika too. Yuki ran over to Soiji with a big smile. Sakumi was looking at Soichi right behind her. Her expression was also cheerful. But Smith started explaining before Soichi could respond to them. When she heard Smith's voice, Yuki frantically looked back at her own PDA. The best part about this extra game is that if you guys win, then all 11 of you can remove your collars. What? On the other hand, even if you lose, there will be no penalty to you. This is an unnecessary fight for you guys anyhow. Um, so it would be too cruel to force a penalty on you. So you can help but doubt that it sounds too good to be true. Way too good to be true considering all they've been through up till now. Then I'll explain the rules. Right now, um, 8 out of the 11 of you can are capable of acting. We will prepare a same a soldiers the same amount for you guys. 
君たちは連れ去られないようにその一人を守るんだ They'll try to capture one of you. Um, so you have to protect them so they don't take, her, they take them away. If you can protect them until the game, until the game ends, then you win. If that person is captured or killed, then, then you lose. Simple, isn't it? The fourth floor had just become a forbidden area. There were just about 17 hours left. That was almost an entire day. You're free to use whatever weapons you like. In exchange, we get the same privilege. But be careful to protect your um But be careful to protect that person. If you if they die, it'll all be for nothing after Now let's pick the target you have to protect. As Smith announced this, a slot machine came a large slot machine came from the right side of the screen. The reels of the slots had um playing cards on them. I'll spend the slots. And whoever the and whoever's PDA the slot stop on will be the, will be the designated target for us. So basically, we'll be just picking them at random based on these slots. Sounds fair, doesn't it? All right, then let's get started. Smith swung his hands. And the slot, slot reels start revolving with a light electronic noise. The slots continue revolving for a while. Okay, stop. When Smith start, said that, um, three bells rang as the slots stopped in place. Three nine of spades were lined up on the slots. It's me. When Yuki shouted that, Soichi understood everything. This was the point of this extra game from the start. Through the extra game, they were allowing, um, uh, um. Hold on a second. Through the extra game, they were sending in soldiers that could act within the boundaries of the game. And they may look like Yuki was coincidentally their target. With this, the casino customers wouldn't suspect a thing. As long as they didn't destroy the boundaries of the game in the show, um, no, they could they could recover Yuki without destroying the boundaries of the game or the show. And so, this means that our lucky winner is the owner of the, the tar our lucky target is the owner of the nine PDA. Smith produced the drum and flute from nowhere and pounded the blue on them separately. And that's the extra game we proposed to you. But we're not unfair. We're not going to force it on you. 
一部の人間を救うためにわざわざ危険を犯すとは言えないさですはい。It's democratic, wouldn't you say? Smith then put his head in through the plates. You have 10 minutes to vote. It's a very important matter, so think about it real carefully. Oh, right. Just so you know, um, even if you decide to do the extra game, we guarantee lives the three who are unconscious right now, so don't worry about that. You just have to worry about yourselves. I know I keep saying this, but we're not unfair. We won't be even pushing that sort of biased stuff on you. Smith then waved one more time at Soichi and the other two the screen. You didn't at all have the atmosphere of someone who controlled people's lives. He felt like an observer at a sports match. Alright, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Until then, see you later. Smith then just disappears、um, as though nothing had happened. Leaving just the two、um, voting plates on the screen. Mayumi Goda gripped her PDA in anger. What does she need to go to the soda monaco? Conna go to the kitto cane the summon, eh? Conna Kurushimagi and the Sakuba, Umaku, Ek to the Momoki, the Nokasia. Hold on a second. Just taking a quick drink break. Here we continue. They didn't consult me on this at all. It must have been Mr. Kaneda. Does he really think a plan this desperate will work? Go there then, touch the screen, finish voting. On the other hand, that means this is no longer my responsibility. No, sorry, on the other hand, that means I won't have to take responsibility for this. 
They'd set up this extra game without consoling Gotha. Gotha assumed that it was kind of the Supreme Board directors who ordered it. Gotha had known the had known the dealer currently operating the control room for a long time now, so she didn't think he would have decided something like this on his own. And if Kanda had given the order, the dealer couldn't um, refuse. And naturally, Go didn't have a, the right to oppose Kanda either. She had to do whatever he ordered. In other words, responsibility for this game had transferred over to Kaneda. That's a huge load off my mind. I was planning about what might happen for a while, but now I want to take responsibility, um, even if the princess dies. You've really saved me, Kaneda, Mr. Kaneda. I also have to protect myself then. Go to smile in relief as she felt the tension lift from her. Even Gota, who was used to this place, um, had been busy to her wit's end over the last three days. I don't want to get caught up in it, so I don't want this extra game to start, but... Gota had been relieved of her responsibility. She sighed and pressed the... And press the refuse vote. <laughs> Takayama, you seeing this shit? Tezuka bent back with laughter as though it was the funniest thing in the world. As a result, he stopped smoking on his cigarettes. And he, and he casually threw the still lit cigarette aside. So it really was that girl, huh? They're really forcing this stuff so they can get that girl back safely without disrupting the order of the show. <laughs> this is some real bullshit here. Honestly, she should probably just cancel it at this rate. So did Tezuka. Oh, sorry. Um, honestly, they should have just cancelled it. So, what do you plan on doing, Tezuka? It don't matter. No matter what we vote, it'll be the same. The result will be the same for us. See your way. Let's just vote anything. It'll be a problem for us if the if our PDAs are stuck on the screen for forever. Takeyama reaches finger out to his PDA for a with his robust finger out to the PDA with a serious expression. Takeyama was more concerned about them not being able to use their PDAs until they voted. 
You just wanted to get back to their normal screen as soon as possible. Mata. Wait. Otsuka grabbed his hand. Dosto. What is it? Dose onajinara. Koko o tsukutta renchu ni yagarase o shite yaro zo. Takayama o danda. Antai ni dete kunna. Same year way. Let's raise some hell for the people who put us through this shit. Takayama, you were gonna refuse, weren't you? Don't do it. Tezuka. Wore a ghastly smile at that moment. Are Refusal votes there are the more, the more we'll push. They'll be pushed into a corner, or maybe they'll break their own rules and manipulate the votes. Whatever the case, if we pick refuse, um, then the chances will all be on the rocks. Who will prevail? Their intentions or the game? Sesko then chuckled again. Talking almost there, Tezuka. Huh? Hmm? What is it? Those guys asked that question when he saw Takayama staring at him. And Takayama opened his shut mouth. I wouldn't play a game against you. Oh boy. Don't be such a party pooper, you know, Takeyama. I'm losing here, so why don't we play some poker next time? And who are you planning of ripping off? And who are you planning of ripping off their money? Yakuza no Toba no Daikinko. Kore ga watta ra yappari ore to kume yo, Takayama no san. Anta nara ore to yatte ikere. Hold on a second.
Okay, back. Wait, hold on a second. Just want to do an audio test. Audio test. Okay, it seems it's working. Alright, so who are you planning on ripping the money off of? And Tezuka says A big ass safe from a Yakuza gambling den. <laughs> Once this is over, you and I really should team up, Takayama. You and I will make it just fine. <laughs> I'm not much one for a for a um bloodthirsty life. On the coincidence, neither am I. Tezuka then boldly continued smiling. Into amusement striking all over him. It had been five minutes since Smith had disappeared. At this point in time, everyone apart from Soji's group had already voted. All of them against refusal. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, me I messed up earlier. Tezuka was telling Takayama to vote for her fools, fools and not against it. Sorry, I messed that up. As proof of that, the refusal, um, played had three, had the number three on it. Soichi the other's hand voted. But they were solidifying their opinions. This is a trap! The goal is as clear as day. Trap or not, we might be able to get you, Fumika, and Yuki's collars off through this, right? We only need to bring forth new dangers in order to make that happen. Soichi was against this extra game. On the other hand, Sakami, Fumika, and Nagisa were for it. Yuki wasn't sure who to side with. And so she just watched them argue. In the first place, Yuki's collar is broken anyway. And we just have to find the, the Joker for Fumika. You don't need to put us all in danger just for me. We don't need to put us all in danger just for me. Soichi was wary of letting the um, of letting their enemies operate within the rules boundaries of the game. In that situation, their enemies could attack them for as long as they pleased. Furthermore, unlike up to this point, there would be no need for them to concern themselves about making sure things before and after the battle matched up so they could go all out. So 
So she believed they couldn't um put themselves in danger for just for him. But your life is on the line here. In the end, we still haven't found a way to remove your collar, have we? And if this really is a show, and the people who set this up won't be giving us the, um, a way to do that any time after this. In contrast, Sock Me and were trying to find a way for everyone, for everyone to survive and make it home alive. To not accept this extra game would mean um, leaving Soichi to die. As long as this was a show, it was hard to believe that the organization would give them any other way to remove the collars. In other words, this extra game was the last chance to save Soichi's life. You dumbass! Why can't you realize it's why don't you realize how dangerous this is? You're the one who doesn't understand. Why won't why don't you understand how we feel? When Soichi rejected um the extra game. Oddly enough, it was Sakami who was the, who directly opposed him. She'd always been timid, but she went back down this time. When Sakami and her the um, organization proposed this extra game. She also realized that meant that there was probably no other way to remove the collar. Announcing there was no other way to remove the collars. Because if there were, there probably there would have been practically no need to propose this extra game to begin with. This proposal has significance because it would mean cutting off the route of escape. As long as this was a show, they wouldn't improve any other way of removing their collars. At this rate, Mitsurugi will die. My precious Mitsurugi. It was due to those intense feelings of hers that sucked me one back down. Big bro. You can not only so nervously watch the conversation go on. It was then that Fumika broke her silence. Soichi, while I do think you have a point, I think we should go along with this extra game. Why is that? いずれ彼らは強行してくる。辻褄合わせを諦めてしまえば何も問題はないわ。Even this extra game doesn't start. They will come attack us full force eventually. If they give up on making things consist on making a consistent story for the um, customers, then they won't have any issues with that. One second. What Fumiko's concerned about 
was when the organization, the appeal from the organization, upon their complete, um, starting their complete fake situation. They could use actors who resembled resembled Soichi and the others to create um, footage for their own convenience and use it to contain the game to the end. The reason um, they hadn't been forcing the group up until now was because they were planning on making Soichi and the others continue with the game once they recovered Yuki. If they were giving up on that and going through with this whole fake stage performance, that meant that their enemies could go full force on them. Were capable of going full force on them. Even if they killed Soichi and the others, um, they just had to use their actors to make it look like the game was continuing. But that would be a breach of, fa of trust with the customers of the casino. Since it was an action that would overturn the base of the game, um, the organization probably couldn't choose that. In that event, they would um, can't, they would stop the game. They would um, cancel the game. And simply capture Yuki by force if they had to. So that happened, and the group would still be in danger. But at this point in time, there was a low possibility to do that given the extra game they suggested. Wait, hold on a second, I think I misread that. Sorry, but at this point in time, if they were going to do that, uh, they would need to make preparations, so the possibility that was low. They, can't, they probably can't prepare um, false footage right away. But if they really do do that, then it'll be game over for us. Um, but if we accept the extra game now, at the very least, they'll buy to the game and the rules. I think it'd be smarter for us to um to agree while they're still giving us a chance to remove our cause if we win. Fumika didn't also didn't think this was for the best. That was why her face was so scrunched with bitterness. It was literally a difficult choice. But 
they didn't pick it, she thought that their chance of surviving would go completely out the window. Mitsurugi-san! Now with Fumika's support, um, Sakami um, pressed Soichi for a choice. I can't do it. But even so, Soichi shook his head. Why? Because if we um, accept this extra game now, those guys will will probably attack us right attack us soon. There's still over ten hours until there's over ten hours until the game ends. There's no way amateurs like us can defend ourselves against pros attacks from pros like them for that long. But Fumika may be strong, but she, even she can't handle these many. Um, she won't be able to get off any surprise attacks like last time. That's. Sakami went speechless and bit her lip. Hey, best for us not to accept this extra game. If unless we, if we, if we do, then we'll all be killed right away. They may attack us eventually, but we'll definitely, but we definitely can survive until then. That'll also be best for Fumika's objective. Fumika's objective was to protect Yuki by all means necessary and force the boss of the organization out. Sorry, um, their enemy's intention shouldn't be to suppress them right away, right now. My life doesn't matter. There's no other way to protect you all. I'm not wrong. Am I, I'm not wrong. Am I right, Sakami? My life doesn't matter. There's no other way to protect you all. I'm not wrong. Those words sunk in, um, penetrates Sakami's heart. I'm not wrong. That came from his promise to his dead girlfriend. There's no other way to protect you all. That stemmed from his um, fail from his regret of his failure to protect his girlfriend. That's why he protected them all. Life doesn't matter at all. That's. That's. I see, of course. It's because that's what you want, isn't it, Mitsurugi? That's correct, Mitsurugi. You're not wrong. And so it was that Sakami finally uh, realized the truth about Soichi Mitsurugi. Even after she heard about the death of his girlfriend, Sakami still had some que still had a question. But 
even if he was motivated by his promise to her. Something had seemed odd to shock me about the way that he protected them all with no regard for his own safety. Like the time when she and Yuki had been frozen with fear. And when Yuki's collar had activated. That wasn't all. At all other times and situations, Soichi had thrown himself into danger to protect them all without the least bit of hesitation. Sakumi had always found that strange. She wondered what it was that that made Soichi so brave. Affection for Sakumi and Yuki? There had been a time where Sakumi had anticipated that. But she now not, knew that to be impossible since even since Soichi still um, thought only of his girlfriend. To put himself in a um, put himself in a better position by gaining the group their trust. Well, if that were the case, that would have been way too dangerous for Soichi to keep doing that over and over again. It was too natural, consider um, considering the risk versus the return involved. So what was he trying to do? So at this point, Sakumi finally felt she had the answer. Well, I'm going to say a quick drink break. Okay, I'm back. You're correct, Mitsurugi. Your excuse is perfect. Sakumi stood in front of Soichi and quietly said those words. Excuse? Soichi's eyes widened with surprise. That's right. Because... Because you... Sakumi's eyes wavered. When she lifted her, fit, her, her head, um, the tears building up in them scattered. Because you don't actually think that at all. Am I wrong? Her words were sharp and firm. So she was taken aback by that. Oh, hold on. Soichi was taken aback by those words most unbefitting of Sakami. What? Soichi was rendered speechless by those unexpected words. Now I know just how now I'm well aware of how much your girlfriend suffered. No, what what pain was for your girlfriend? You always take the easy path. You're a coward. Yuki had frequently called Soichi a coward. Sakumi had interpreted that as a joke. But now Sakumi realized that it was the truth.
that's not true at all. I'm not being sly. I really am worried about all of you, that's all. Is that... Are you, is that true? Soichi was shaken up. Sakumi's eyes sharpened when she... narrow when she saw that. Once she saw that, she became sure that her guess was right on the mark. Yeah, really. You're lying. That's not true. I, I know I'm doing the right thing. Soji took a step back, so he went. Um, wait, hold on. Soji took a step forward. Um, so he wouldn't be daunted by Sakumi's pressure. Then why don't you look at us? Why don't you consider our feelings? I do. And if you all die, it'll all be for nothing. No, you're lying. Sakumi wiped her tears and, st and glared right into at Soichi. Her eyes were filled with a fierce will that would not allow any excuses. You don't consider our feelings at all. Sakumi grabs Soichi's clothes. Even if we abandon you and get out of here alive, we won't, we won't find happiness. We won't be able to go back to our old lives. You can't just protect our lives here. Sakumi tugged at Soichi. And got up in his face. You should understand that, right? After all, you couldn't go back to your old life after you lost your girlfriend. Soichi had once said it. That he was lonely on his own. That the three of them should just die if it meant him if it meant him being alone. And how there was something scarier than death. Now by now Sakumi was fully aware of what that meant. It all tied back to that. <laughs> So why are you trying to throw yourself and only yourself into danger? Even though you should be fully aware of how we of how we'll feel if you do that. That so you couldn't answer. It wasn't that so she didn't understand his own feelings. No way, hold on. Soichi no longer understood his own feelings. He shouldn't have been being sly. He should have been um, keeping his promise with Yuki by protecting everyone. But the words Sakumi had just spoken did indeed sound like the truth. They held so much strength that they pierced Soichi's heart. Hold on a second. Hold on.
sorry about that. I had to attend to something. Okay, let's get back to this. You aren't protecting us. You're just using us. You only you are, you're only protecting us because you want an excuse, a, rest, a justification. That's not true. That's ridiculous. That couldn't be true. That's right. You can't admit it, can you? Because if you do admit it, then you can't um, fulfill your true goal, can you? Huh? My true goal? At that moment, Soichi realized something in the depths of his heart. Something so craftily hidden that even he hadn't noticed it. Admit it, Soichi Mitsurugi. You're not trying. You're not doing the right thing. You're just using us as tools to assist in your suicide. Sakami's screams exposed um, the wish hidden in the depths of Soichi's heart. Heart. I. Soichi was rendered speechless by the shock, and he stood frozen on the spot. His knees cackled, and felt like he was going to fall any second. To Soichi, every day without his girlfriend had been hell. The regret of having failed to protect her had brought Soichi unimaginable agony. Hold on a second. The days that passed by were were becoming a rope slowly but surely strangling Soichi. Powerful enough to make him suffer, but but weak enough so that he wouldn't die. Even breathe, even the act of breathing felt like it made it feel like his lungs were on fire. Even when he opened his eyes, it felt like there was sand being forced in them. Soichi, the loss of his girlfriend Yuki, had been the same as his paradise turning into a hell. And though several months had passed since then, he never considered suicide. Hold on a second. No, sorry. And several months had passed. No, never. And there was a day that didn't go by that he didn't c consider suicide. But his promise with Yuki prevented that. It was right then that Soichi was thrown into the game. It was there that Soichi met them. A girl named Yuki. And a girl who was the splitting image of Yuki. That was why Soichi protected them. So he didn't lose Yuki again. That was why he, um... That was why he didn't, um, fear for his own life. Because that meant he could die. 
Suicide was sly, but dying protecting someone else wasn't sly. Especially all the more if it was protecting Yuki. In the end, Soichi hadn't been thinking about Sakami or Yuki in the least. In the end, it was all for Yuki, and just so he, so he could secure a rationalization for his suicide. As Soichi stood frozen in shock, um, Sakami, um, vote, touched her, um, PDA screen to vote. She picked Agree. When they saw that, Fumika and Nagisa also voted. Both of them were smiling a little. Much like Sakami, they also voted for Agree. Now the vote was 3-3, three to three, perfectly even. All that was- the rest depended on Soichi and Yuki's votes. What are you gonna do, big bro? But Soichi couldn't move. Sakami's words kept replaying in his mind over and over again. What should I do? Agree? Refuse? Should I agree for everyone's sake? Or should I refuse for everyone's sake? Which is right? Which is the best to do? <laughs> Mitsurugi, your mind's going down dark directions again, isn't it? The harsh expression on Sakami's face had faded. And now she wore a gentle smile. Sorry, one second. But you can't. I'll never let make you I'll never let you make any excuses. Huh? And then Sakami acted before Soichi could question her. She snatched Soichi's, um... PDA from him. And then threw it to the ground. PDA danced in the air after it crashed into the ground and scattered parts of plastic, um, and bits of plastic scattered around the area. The, the LCD was split in two, and the screen that had been displaying there completely disappeared. Sakami? Go ahead, Yuki. Vote however you like. Please vote however you like without worrying about us. Soichi's PDA was wrecked. The front cover was cracked. And the parts inside were exposed. And several of them had flown out. It's clear as day that could never be used again. Why did you do that, Sakami? Soichi was flustered. But so Sakami spoke to Yuki as though she were ignoring Soichi. It's a very important decision, so please think about it carefully. Just think about what will lead you to a happier conclusion. Okay, got it. Yuki looked up at Sakami and nodded with a serious look on her face. 
Yuki then touched her PDA. She tapped the, the um the agree panel. Do you realize? Do you all realize what you've just done? Soichi muttered as he looked down on his broken PDA. Because his PDA was broken, he could no longer vote. As a result, the vote was now with four, four agrees and three refusals. In other words, the extra game would go on. You're the one who doesn't understand me, Tsurugi. Sakumi turned back to Soichi. Now the enemy will be coming our way, Mitsugi. If you want to run, then go ahead. I won't stop you if you want to kill yourself. Now you can't make any more excuses, can you? Decide everything on your own. And do please do whatever you'd like. Sakumi smiled. Due to all the struggles they've had up to this point, her face was a little was dirty. A trail of tears ran down the cheeks of the fa face caked with dust and mud. But even so, her smile was beautiful. There wasn't a the slightest hint of regret on it. Just the gleaming satisfaction of having accomplished something. It was the kind of smile that could um, purify all those who looked at it. We'll take on those soldiers here, and then we'll protect Yuki and I'll go home alive. Sakumi said then, and looked at her comrades behind her. They were all smiling and nodding at Sakumi. Everyone agreed with Sakumi. It'll be the same no matter what you try to do. Your decision won't won't, inf won't influence our destiny. Or oh, sorry, your decisions won't influence our fate. The game and the rules no longer matter. What do you want to do, Mitsurugi? And Sakumi smiled one more time at Soichi. The weakness he shown when they, she, they first met was nowhere to be found. Her face um, beamed with a um, gentle will and kindness. That's why Sakumi broke my PDA. Soichi then, um... No, it was all in order to make Soichi look at his own heart. So that his decisions can no longer influence anyone's fate. And so that he can no longer make excuses. So I have to make clear exactly what it is that I want to do. And then Soichi had discovered his own truth. He protected them because Yuki and Sakumi were there. That was an excuse. 
He was against the extra game for everyone's sake. Of course, that was also an excuse. I see. In the end, I was only doing what I, I was only doing what I wanted. So that you'd finally realize that there was nothing to it at all. It was exactly as Sakmi had said. He wanted to he wanted to commit suicide, and I was just covering that up with excuses. Thank you, Sakumi. And so Soichi smiled at Sakumi. It was the first heartfelt smile he'd given in a long time. I was just about to screw up big time. He was happy. Because the one known as Sak um, Sakumi Himehagi um, understood him so well. I want to get out of here alive with everyone. He couldn't use them as tools for his suicide. They weren't a rope to hang himself with. Now he acknowledged his own weakness and can see the rest of his comrades for the people they actually were. He genuinely wanted, um, he genuinely wanted to go home alive with them. He wanted to go to the future that lied ahead of that. I don't have much confidence in myself, but... I'm sorry, Mitsuruki. From now on... Sakumi's smile changed in its nature. It was a smile brimming with deep trust and affection. I'll protect your bravery. When he saw that look on Sakumi's face, the anxiety in Soichi's heart um, felt like it was fading away. Yeah, yeah. I'm counting on you, Sakumi. As you see, all, after all, all as, you, as you've seen, all I can do is be sly. Right. Sakumi then wiped, um... Tears then poured from Sakumi's eyes as she nodded firmly. That's right. Then Soichi remembered something. Hey Sakumi, once this is all over, will you go on a date with me? Uh, 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 hi. uh yes. Sakumi nodded flusteredly. She didn't blush with a bit of embarrassment. The fierce will she'd shown till now had gone completely out the window. It seems like there's this good cake shop. Hey, I want to come too. Yuki ran over to Soichi and jumped up and down in front of him. Sounds good, Yuki. Let's all go together, shall we? What's this? You're not gonna invite us? When Soichi rustled Yuki's hair, um, Fumika popped up from next to Sakami. I want to eat cake too, Soichi. Nagisa popped in from the opposite side of Fumika. Nuh uh. Big, big bro only likes, um. Likes young girls like Big Sis Sakami. Yuki's words dissipated the tension that built up in everyone all at once. 
Hey, Yuki. How mean. I like to think I'm still young. <laughs> Sorry. Before long, she started laughing loudly. And so it was that a, that a burst of great laughter, rarely heard in this place, erupted. Hold on a second. I'm going to keep going for a little longer. For now, let's just save and make the bet. Let me check the bets. As you can see, the bets have all changed dramatically. Around the time the g extra game was set in stone, um, a certain piece of information um, reached the command center of Ace. One of the operators checked. Um, screen that displayed that information and a printout that that also held the same information checking it over and over and he was done with that he grabbed the paper and ran over to the cent center of the control room This era of sophisticated electronics is uh, where electronics had um, grown advanced. Um, normally, the sort of information would have been conveyed over a mic or electronically. But this information was so important that it um, that th that um, it had to be delayed ver had to be delayed verbally. Just want to show how vital this information was. Shire, Kajino Sen no Ichi ga hamei. Tokyo Hawaii Koro kara 300 kilo minami ni hazreta kokai jo desu. Commander, we have turned the location of the casino boat. Casino ship, sorry. Casino ship. It's sailing 300 kilometers, kilometers south of the sea route from Tokyo to Hawaii. The casino ship was a luxury liner owned by the organization. They contain various leisure facilities, including um, the gambling facilities for this game. And it wouldn't be that out of place to call it a theme park, for how gaudy it was.
Alright, incidentally, the operation of the game was usually held from within the ship so that they could um, view the customers' reactions. They used, um, they operated the building where the game was held remotely via satellite. Do we have satellite imagery? Channel on channel 7. The man called the commander, um, operated one of the monitors. When it did, it showed an aerial view of the cruise liner. It seems the information was correct, Commander. Deputy Commander, watching the same footage by his side, um, muttered that, and the Commander nodded. They're headed, they're headed, they're headed right there. It shouldn't be that far. Oh, sorry. He's heading there. He shouldn't be too far away. The he they were talking about was, um... One second. Sorry, the he they were talking about was Ryosuke Shikijo, the current leader of the organization. At present, um, he was heading um, to the to the ship in question via private helicopter. What time are our units scheduled to arrive? Approximately two and a half hours. At 2130. 930, huh? The commander took breathed a sigh and leaned back in his seat. Do you think those 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 kids will hold out until then? I can only hope they do. They wait for Ryo for um, Ryosuke, um for Ryo sorry. They wait for Ryosuke Shikicho to arrive and then launch the attack. An attack will be meaningless unless they could actually capture him. They wouldn't be able to achieve to um, total victory unless they captured the boss, um, secured the casino ship and its passengers, and launched a simultaneous attack on the on the organization's various bases. How ironic! Man that smiled wryly as he leaned back in the seat. To think that our fate would be determined by the, the result of the game this late into things. If Soichi and the others were quickly wiped out, um, then, um, then Ryosuke Shikijo might not head for the casino ship anymore. If that happened, then their attack plan would all go up, would all um, go to waste. One 
second. Unless they captured you, um, sorry, one second. Unless they captured Ryosuke Shiki Joe, um, they wouldn't be able to completely, um, unless they captured, um, Ryosuke, um, Shiki Joe personally, they wouldn't be able to wipe out, completely wipe out the influence of the organization that held such a grasp on the political and economic world. As long as they held, um, held, had their clutches on the upper um, echelons of the um, political and economic world, um, and even if um, ACE was an illegal organization, if they if they showed proof from Ryosuke Shikijo. Or secure um, suitable proof themselves. They need that more than anything. With that, then people in various and people in various positions couldn't silence Ace's actions. If only we made our preparations a little earlier, then we could have finished this without ha making them, having to make them accept that extra game. When Soichi's group enforced a vote, they still hadn't um, solidified their um, attack plan. There was still the question of where Ryosuke Shikijo was heading, and they couldn't and they couldn't fit and they couldn't accomplish that in time before the voting um, deadline ran out. If Ace had um, known if they were attacking right away, then Soichi and the others could have refused the extra game, probably. But reality didn't go so smoothly. All we can do is um, put our faith in the actions of the woman from Kogami's people. Her aside, the rest are all amateurs. I can't place much stock in I can't place much stock in their chance of victory. They have to win. All we can do is bet on their victory. They were, they were approaching their, they were approaching the finale of their 30-year battle with the organization. I 
okay. A large that large helicopter arrived um, just as go the um, and got to the roof from the sixth floor. The helicopter was carrying the soldiers sent to replace the ones Fumika defeated. Since they've been um, specially called out, um, their strength was on a level far beyond the ones who've been brought here. The helicopter rose, rotors um, spun loudly. Um, Spun, uh, spun struck powerfully, um, sending a gust of wind in, in Go's direction. She narrowed her eyes, looked up at the, um, and headed towards the helicopter. At the same time, Fully armed men in urban camouflage um, filed out the helicopter one after another. I am Goda, the game master in charge of this game. Here to assist you. Here to assist you. I'll be damned if I get caught up in this and get hurt as a result. That was the main reason why um, she made con contact with them as soon as she could. We've heard, but that won't be necessary. The man at the lead um, shook his head at Goda and for some reason pointed a gun at her. What are you doing? Our mission isn't only to secure the girl unharmed. Then the man coldly pulled the trigger. Put his finger on the trigger. Extra game of the seven players. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Then the man coldly pulled the trigger. It's also our mission to, um, to assassinate the seven participants of the extra game, with no exceptions, excluding the girl. That sound was drowned out by the helicopter rotors. No exceptions. I'm being forced to take responsibility? In her last moment, Gola realized that she was being made to take responsibility for everything that happened here. She was un she was unbelievably bitter about it. Um but with a bullet through her head, there's no more there was nothing she could do anymore. All she could do was powerlessly flop onto the ground. <laughs> Let's go, you sons of bitches! The show's about to start. <laughs> the last thing Gota heard before she died was the war cry from those men. Okay, I'm going to end the stream here. So, uh, yeah. This is leading up towards a climax, as you can see. And a lot went down. So we'll have to um, see the resolutions then next time. And yeah, so much just happened, I really can't sum it all up. So until then, I'll see you all later. Shouldn't have much left in this series. Probably, I'm going to say about three more streams, roughly. Probably, three or four. So until then, I'll see you later.